back in 1758. He designed the most famous ship in British history. Hello and welcome back to my channel and for another history walk around the town of Ipswich. In this video I'll discover an early pioneer in the world of aviation and discover a link to the most famous ship in British history. But I'm starting my walk here by the old docks which is now Ipswich Marina and uh, I've just arrived at the marina and I've discovered something really quite incredible. I found Noah's Ark. For years people have been looking for it on Mount Ararat but it's not there, it's here in Ipswich. It came to Ipswich in January of 2020. It's actually a floating museum but because of the coronavirus restrictions and um, it's been unable to leave and it's still here and this thing is absolutely huge. It's... I've seen all sorts of strange ships and vessels walking around harbours, ports, marinas around the country, around England and around the world but I've never seen anything as fantastic as Noah's Ark. I've read the story in the Bible of how Noah built the ark and how the animals went in two by two and the artist's depictions look exactly the same as what I'm standing next to here. It's a great shame that it's closed. Um, I'm going to have to investigate a little further and find out how long it's here for and try and pay another visit and actually go inside or try and track it around the world and try and pay a visit wherever it is and wherever I happen to be. So hopefully this won't be the last time that I see Noah's Ark. But uh, I'm really chuffed, really pleased to, uh, to have found it. which is uh, it's one of the oldest towns in the country and in the Doomsday Survey of 1086 it was the eighth largest in the country with 322 houses listed. But there's been a port here at Ipswich on the River Orwell since about the 7th century. The location provided good links to the continent for trade and commerce but equally it provided a good link to the Viking raiders who came here as well. The Danes settled in, uh, in this part of uh, England uh, from around the year 869 and they left in 917. They were driven out by the forces of uh, Edward the Elder. The early port here would have been uh, wooden jetties and structures to allow small trading vessels to, uh, to load and unload their cargo. As the years went by those jetties would have got larger to accommodate more ships and even larger ships as well. The docks as we see them today were constructed in 1842 and uh, continued uh, until the 1970s when they fell out of use. The whole area now has been regenerated with uh, luxury flats and uh, this superb marina. I've had a little walk around looking at uh, all the, uh, the different vessels and boats ranging from the very smallest to some rather impressive super yachts. There's one interesting building behind me, and it's called the Wine Rack. Construction started around uh, I think 2006, but due to the financial crisis of 2007 and 2008, uh, work was stopped. It lay empty for years, and the, uh, the locals called it the Wine Rack because that's what it resembled. Today it's a luxury block of flats, and uh, the name was stuck.
just on my left is the uh, the customs house. It was built in 1844 by the architect John Medlin Clark. And underneath the uh, impressive um, steps at the front is a blue door. And this is the entrance to the bonded warehouse. This is where goods that required duty, duty to be paid on them uh, were stored. Wine, spirits, tobaccos, etc. Walking around the marina now for well, well over an hour. There really are some impressive uh, boats there on the uh, moored up on the quayside. Some really nice super super yachts, sun seekers. One of these days I'll get drunk and on board one. But uh, we can all walk around and dream, can't we? Found some really lovely boats uh, the other day when I was walking around uh, Swansea Marina. Absolutely delightful down there, and equally here as well. I just love walking around marinas. But uh, just coming across an interesting statue here. It's outside the University of Essex building and it's a giant question mark. And it's been it's installed by, um, or manufactured by um, a London based architect called uh, Langland and Bell. And apparently it cost £200,000, which does seem a lot of money for a, for a statue. But um, I'm not a great fan of modern art. But there's something about this one which I rather like. I guess it's because the, um, the question mark is horizontal and not vertical. We're used to seeing question marks written down in, uh, in English in, in, in a vertical position. So because it's horizontal, I think it's got that, first and certainly for me, it's got that attraction, which I quite like. But uh, yeah, 200,000 pounds does seem a lot of money for a, a question mark. But I have to question that cost if I was paying for it. It does seem a lot of money. Just taking a walk down 4th Street. Uh, back in the 15th century, this would have been the centre of the wool trade here in Ipswich. Finished products from the surrounding area, towns like Kersey, Hadley and Lavenham, would send their products here to the merchants to be sent abroad for export. But also there's a, there's a house here with, with a link to a famous aviator. Um, she's called Edith Maud Cook and she was born in this house just behind me on the 1st of September 1878 and she was the, the first female pilot in this country. Edith learned to fly at the uh, Blériot Flying School and she learned to fly in a Blériot X1. But apart from being a pilot, she was also a parachutist and it's that activity which was to end her life on the 10th of July 1910 in an accident in Coventry. But next to her the house where she was born is the Neptune. This used to be a, a merchant's house, it dates from 1490, but it also used to be the Neptune pub as well. Today it's a holiday home and uh, you can actually go and book rooms there, which is, uh, which is quite nice. But one of the oldest houses in, uh, in Ipswich, it actually survived quite miraculously to the present day because this area during the Second World War took a right pasting from the Luftwaffe. The docks were naturally a target and so was the surrounding area. And much of Ipswich was destroyed, especially this part. However, one or two buildings have, uh, have survived. Unfortunately, the oldest Ipswich is one of them, the Neptune Inn. interesting architecture down on 4th uh, Street from the old pubs and to uh, more modern buildings but uh, I've just come up to uh, St Clement's Church uh, so it dates from the 14th century and it's got some really interesting uh, flint cladding on the outside uh, St Clement's was the, uh, the fourth Pope of Rome in 88 AD and is also the patron saint of mariners so it's quite understandable that uh, there would be a 
a church dedicated to him near the old port. However, I'm here not because of the church, because there's a rather interesting grave I want to see. And it's that of a man called uh, Sir Thomas Slade. Back in 1758, he designed the most famous ship in British history. The ship first sailed in 1765, and in 1805, it was captained by, Sir, by Horatio Nelson at the Battle of Trafalgar. And he's buried here in Ipswich. I've made a few trips down to, uh, to Portsmouth over the years and I've been on board HMS Victory and wow what an incredible ship she is and so well preserved as well in dry dock. Looking at her you would never think she's over 250 years old but she is missing her sails today. I can only imagine from watching um, historical films and documentaries just how impressive she must have been under full sail. It's interesting that uh, the man who designed her is buried here in Ipswich. His wife Hannah is also buried here, but she's buried in a separate grave with her parents. But this is where I end this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.